Joshua, and I'm an INTP. And first and foremost, I would like to say thank you for reviewing this video and subsequently visiting my channel. The topic of this video will be on the inferior function, and it will be an addressing of the excuse me the uh, way uh, I think about the inferior function and um, what I read from Jung in terms of uh, depth psychology and BB and personality's role in depth psychology and the actualization of the individual. Um, so it's to say I think that why this topic even comes to mind for myself is that in the current landscape of MBTI and at least when people are trying to use typology as a tool either to predict uh, results in terms of performance, which it should never be used for such things, or um, uh, trying to be a therapeutic tool, very often the items of, uh, I suppose, just uh, ascription or prescription and assagement are behavioral mandates. So it's that, you know, if you struggle with being, with extroverted feeling, you should probably do something like speed dating. They will give you practices, or you should probably do something like public speaking. And uh, for myself, being an INTP and being somebody, despite my articulation, somebody who does not enjoy communication, particularly interpersonal communication, and talking, these were things that I did and I practiced because, honestly, um, being communicative, uh, relational in some ways was very much a struggle for me in ways that uh, had things to do with extroverted feeling and uh, in, in ways that had nothing to do with extroverted feeling. And um, very really that the behavioral mandates that I took in um, practice did not really do anything about the relation of myself and its um, a proximity, appreciation, and utilization of uh, extroverted feeling as a function within uh, my value structure and an aspect of myself that I could use as a um, generative agent and something to share with others. It was when um, I, I have this analogy like this that um, so something to think about with it before I get into the specifics I suppose something to think about with the inferior function is that it's in one's valued stack it's something you care about it's so interesting that when you do talk to people and you look at them and how they respond to their inferior functions a lot of times there is a serious amount of uh, negative emotion and different things that can be brought up when um, confronted with it, at least in all of its um, fullest expression or uh, seemingly chaotic patterns of uh, interface. And um, you got to ask, th why is that so? Because it's something that you um, like. It's something that your psyche values, but it's something that you find yourself at odds with um, very often, or just completely distance oneself from. It's um, rather strange because it's a, it's a salient part of your um, consciousness. As people get older and as we mature and we actualize, we find that all parts are salient because it's about what it means to be human in a lot of ways in that representation within ourselves by way of the archetype we fit that's our personality but very really it, it's you know the uh, inferior function is within the first four it's not your eighth it's it's not your sixth it's not your fifth it's something that's within that's so closely uh, related to your conscious and the thing that you actively identify with why is it that we have such a um, uh, or why is it that we can have such a negative and um, uh, unfulfilling relationship with it? Um, I, I think 
uh, very really it's because of the different ways that uh, our um, conscious perception of our inferior function can go wrong. So uh, very really we can become, um, uh, so sorry why I was mentioning that is that um, it's, not, it's obvious that it's tough for us to deal with our inferior uh, function. It's tough for us to deal with the sides and the expressions of our psyche that we can't really understand, nor consciously, nor completely consciously perceive, and then have um, it express itself in uh, very mature and nuanced ways for us to utilize it and achieve the things that we want in the environment. It's like the inferior function, as it's necessary to our existence, always presents itself as a barrier in a lot of ways, as we will never be just completely good at it in the way the uh, individual who is dominant in that function will be. And we are always going to see that image and know we're not that. And I guess for those reasons, we'll distance ourselves from it. But if we're into the new age or the new school or something that's come about within the last 15 to 20 years with positive psychology, that we can always better ourselves and we're into growth and personal development. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being into growth and personal development. Though I think in the West, we take it overboard, like in some ways, like it's always build the perfect and new you. It's like, I like uh, personal development, but I think we can take it a little too far. And there's a lot of people that use personality as just a tool of personal development. And actualization and personal development aren't the same things. They're not synonymous. Like. Personal development has something to do with self-actualization, but self-actualization is not just simply personal development, because personal development stands, stems from the school of behaviorism, and behaviors are important to the individual, but I would analogize it like this. Racism was a problem in America, obviously, so we tried to get rid of the institution of racism. How did we try to get rid of the institution of racism was by creating different mandates of legislation. Bureaucracy, essentially. Creating new behaviors are creating bureaucratic structures within the self. There is something deep down within the self that does not give a shit about bureaucracy, if I can just be frank. That there are things that are fundamental to the nature of you as an individual that if you notice that there will be times and instances where you will become uncharacteristic or people will consider you to be acting uncharacteristic and things like that. It's just that there's a certain element of you that is divisive to behaviors. As behaviors, you're not just, despite what a lot of um, people say, you're not just a collection of behaviors. Um, you're not a blank slate. Tabula, tabula rasa is only part of the picture and not the whole thing and you being completely an innate uh, biological entity that can't be um, tamed is also not the complete truth, but there is a duality and a multiplicity to things. Just the point is, is that pure legislation doesn't work. Uh, we created affirmative action, we created different items of uh, government and rules to um, get rid of what we think is a problem in human relation, and it hasn't done it. And I think that anybody who at least for myself when I was um, doing those things that were prescribed to me by um, uh, honestly a uh, positive psychologist that believed in MBTI, um, it just didn't make me a better person as an extroverted feeler. It didn't really make me any um, more capable of being in myself and living in the space that I am as an individual. So, obviously, you go and return to Jung. And so, it's what led me, per se, to, well, no, not necessarily, because I read Jung's work before I got into MBTI, but then as I got into MBTI, I got persuaded by the, um, uh, I would say, positive psychologist in disguise and um, use it as a tool for self-betterment. Uh, but it's really a tool for actualization. It's not a tool for self-betterment. Self-betterment is in the um, uh, set of tools of actualization, but it's only one item and one part that we tend to latch on to in the West because we're overly positive in a lot of ways. But it's like this. So your inferior function, as according to Beebe, posited through Young, 
and the advancement of his ideas stands as your doorway to the unconscious. It's um, the part of yourself that you readily identify with and prefer, but is largely unconscious. It's as if it's the um, lake that has a stream leading to the vast and infinite ocean that is your ideal self. And as I'm saying these things, I don't want anybody to think that I'm overly spiritual or anything like that. As I said in other videos, I think there are very real biological reasons for such things. But it's uh, an analogy and a metaphor that works to me. It's very practically useful. I get that from my INTJ friend. Anyways, that's the way that the inferior function works. Now, what's interesting about it, it's where it's something that can um, uh, contain one's shadow and complexes of one's anima. And uh, this is the thing about the inferior function. If one wants to actualize themselves, they have to listen to it. Um, and typically the contents that can get stored within the inferior function are ones that are not very pleasant. Um, typically the emotions of uh, envy, um, disappointment, and resentment get stored in that space or in relation to the items and the aspects that are associated with, for example, say myself, extroverted feeling. And quite honestly, it, the aspects of the totalitarian or the chaotic, whichever one that one's dominant function most resents, um, will naturally in some ways be ascribed to that thing. Like I had a tendency I don't like totalitarianism, and I don't think anybody has to go far in looking at any of my videos to realize that. But um, I realize that there are some aspects of totalitarianism that are necessary in terms of cohesions of societies and civilization, as you need some things to be standardized, you need common practices, and common language or things don't have any real meaning to them, as you can't really have dialogue and communication in relation to another person if there are no grounds of equality and similarity for a basis of relation. That's obvious to me now, as it wasn't obvious to me when I was younger. So I would rebel against any kind of institutionalized anything. But I think that different personalities, so for example, because I'm an uh, introverted thinker and I have extroverted intuition in my dominant function, I tend to be all right with chaos and relativism, but I tend to hate totalitarianism. I think that function uh, personalities like introverted sensing dominance and extroverted thinking dominance will kind of be all right with totalitarianism but will really hate chaos and associate uh, chaos with their inferior function to me it's this duplicity between the aspects or the comfortability with chaos or order or sterility in some ways that are going to flip but it's essentially those elements will also get associated with the inferior func with your inferior function the reason I mention this is because though those are negative things or those those are things that spiritual systems like Buddhism or um, Christianity vilifies in a lot of ways as a desire or whatever.